Hey everyone, it's time for another 3 at 3 on Solar PV. I'm Jen Runyon, Chief Editor of Renewable Energy World. And I'm Paula Mintz, Chief Market Research Analyst at SPV Market Research. Hey Paula. Almost forgot what I was there. Hi. <laughs> so today we're talking about unprofitability, failure, and economically challenged business models. What's going on in the solar market? Paula, we've had such bad news in the past couple of weeks, so I don't know where well, to even start. Where do you want to start? Well, first of all, happy May Day to all yeah, international workers and immigrants. Um, but, oh gosh, uh, where to start? It started a long time ago. Because, yeah. you know, I write about this in the Solar Flare in my reports. We talk about it. unprofitability has been dogging this industry all the way up in the value chain yeah. for decades. Mm, it, it, a lot of it is right now on the manufacturing side is our acceptance of margins that are too slim to support an, running a, a, a company and a lack of understanding of the cultural pressures. So, for example, China, it's you know, basic, it's over 50 percent. Let's just throw that number out of global cell manufacturing. And you have to have a cell to have electricity. So that really matters. So. Um, but they have a complete, the entrepreneurs in China, first of all, there's government support, there's provincial support, there's gray market lending, debt is a real problem there. Right. Everybody owns everybody else. So it, it's, it, and they have a different attitude. It's really not maximize shareholder value, which has its own problems, because if you do that to, and forget about your ethics and your morals, you, you're going to end up in the same boat mm -hmm. eventually. Yeah. In Ron. Uh, but it's it's uh, they value risk. They value take. They value market domination. They value jobs. Right. So it really a fifteen percent margin is just fine in China. Uh, that's yeah. actually great in China. Yeah. But for running a healthy business any, anywhere else in the world, it's really really terrible. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, so Suniva is now bankrupt and has. Is now calling for very high tariffs. I mean, talk 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 to me about that. What's going on there? Can you can you just like lay out a little bit of the story? Well, it's a little ironic. So I'm gonna go back in time to when Solar World was the supposed villain of the piece with their tariffs. Well, <laughs> right. they they were competitively uncompetitive because of the low prices at that point, which were higher than they are now. Right. They started, as we well know, the tariff war actually globally, but in let's focus on the U.S. When even then, there was, and this is in the Solar Flare and also the new report that I wrote, that really, there, there wasn't then enough U.S. manufacturing to serve its market, so it's right. kind of ironic, right. plus everybody outsources, so uh, anyway. So at that time, Suniva was cool to Solar World's tariff, uh -huh. right? Didn't uh -huh. leap on the bandwagon. Sure, yeah. Um, there's an obvious reason for that. If Solar World had failed, that would have left Suniva as the only crystalline manufacturer in the U.S. There's a shoe on the other foot thing here. Yeah. Um, so flash forward to now, and Suniva, which is 63% owned by a Chinese company that acquired Suniva so it could avoid tariffs. Yeah. And Suniva wanted to be acquired 63%. They basically own you. So it wanted sure. that 63% ownership so that it could, uh, you know, survive, right? So, um, so flash forward and now Solar World is sort of not really, is, is not exactly leaping on the new tariff bandwagon. So mm -hmm. again, there's a competitive reason for that. First of all, tariffs aren't going to save Suniva. That company has been floating downhill for a while. The mm -hmm. pressure of these two low prices, which as an industry, we keep leaping up and down and thinking are normal and saying are wonderful. Um, if you're a demand side participant, you're buying modules. Yeah, they're wonderful. If you're trying to make a living as a manufacturer, it's, it's just a slow, long slog to demise, hey, unfortunately. Hey, then well, you have the yeah. PPA underbidding, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, so... Um, the tariffs aren't going to help them at this point. It's a uh, it's such an obvious act of desperation right. it, that it, it it it's really sad. So with Solar World, they were still operating. Suniva no longer operating. Have been laying off people abruptly, you know, in some right. cases, which are isn't necessarily the sign that a company is is about ready to shut its doors, but 
pretty good indication there's something something to miss there no, you know so good yeah yeah i mean so it was so is that floating upstream as well i mean what's going on with we've had other layoffs we've had um spruce financial is now in trouble we've got you know what's going on with that situation well all up and down the chain again so one thing that point i didn't make is who is going to be hurt by tariffs are the demand side participant the people buying the cells and modules yeah, right. are the ones that are hurt Suniva likely can't be saved the people there's no u.s manufacturing to restart really because the cells have to come from somewhere and solar world doesn't have not does not have enough capacity in the u.s yeah. so yeah you know what is really the point here also there was a lot of you know pain of felt on the demand side during the last tariff situation because they were forced to put down large deposits. Mm -hmm. These are small businessmen mm -hmm. mostly. Mm -hmm. Really, there are big developers, mostly it's small dis uh, business people. They were forced to put down hefty deposits on stuff they bought that had not been tariffed. So this just disrupts the market even more. And given the current climate for trade, et cetera, in the U.S. is not likely to solve anything. It's just going to make everything worse. Now, why? Because all up and down the chain, there's unprofitability. The most, the most close to profitable or surviving part of the industry are the small guys who know how to run a business because they're pretty much close to the vest. They're very close yeah. to what you need to have to pay your employees, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So they have higher margins. So you might get a 30, 35% margin for a small installer that by the end, uh, you know, off a sale, by the end, that covers the cost of running the company. Something that the solar industry seems to sadly have ignored Ugh. for quite a few years. Listen, that the margin you make, 30% margin, is barely sufficient. Yeah, the margin sure. you make has to support your whole company and all your operations. Once you forget that you actually, you know, the, a five percent margin I ain't gonna do it. You know, think about your households, right? Of course if not. You just, yeah, like brought in <laughs> just barely enough to barely pay your bills. How long would you be in business as a household? Yeah, until if, something catastrophic happened, or I needed to pay some giant bill, which is happening to these companies. They're getting and that's what's happening. So you got low pay, you got low bidding on. Let's look at the larger, the developers. Right? You got low building on bidding on PPAs globally. By the way, yeah, but the reason you sure. bid on you, you you have no bargaining power because you have to have a PPA signed in order to get the financing. Yeah. And I think about 100 percent of the cases. So you need the low bidding on the PPA, and that sticks you with. And then you think you're going to make it up on production. But if your system doesn't produce because you're buying low quality or lower quality or cutting corners in the install to cover the fact that you really haven't bid enough on this project to serve it, to actually make it profitable, then what you end up with is, you know, less production than you had uh, estimated you were going to make based on, I think I point this out in the solar flare, uh, LCOE models that were very, very optimistic yeah. and ignored realities of the world like low PPA bidding like curtailment, like poor production. So it's all the way from one part of the chain to another. When manufacturers fail, and this is inverter guys, SATCON is an example, mm -hmm. um, when, the many, when the components guys fail, then warranties. Who's covering the warranty? Right, Should nobody. Think <laughs> now, are they going to cover the warranty for Suniva? That now that Suniva is no longer covering the warranty? I mean, I would assume... Hopefully there was a warranty obligation. They're not a public company. I'm just, I'm just throwing stuff out there. I'm yeah. not casting blame. No, I know. And that's, yeah, that's all we can do at this point. I mean, we've got, we've got all this situation happening and we really just need to keep paying attention and, you know, and, and see what's, what, how it's going to revive itself or, or solve itself if it does. And, you know, who are going to be the, uh, the real victims? Well, you know, and also one other thing, and I find this not amusing. Uh, is when in a bankruptcy filing they cite a range of uh, of debt from 100 million, pretty big number, to 500 million, even big number. That's yeah. a huge range. You don't tell me. You don't know what you owe. You just don't want to say. Yeah, exactly. So well, let's assume it's on the high end. Of that's, that you range. Know, not, exactly. <laughs> uh, but it's a huge, broad range, and that is kind of shameful. Yeah. 
in my opinion. So that's a statement I will make there. Wow. Anyway, the reason is, you know, and I think this is a line we were discussing this. This is a line out of the solar flare. It's, you know, the fallacy of unexplored and, you know, optimism in this mm -hmm. industry. Mm -hmm. Essentially, we say the industry is getting big. It's going to be huge. How's it going to get there? Do you have enough capacity? What's the investment for the capacity? You know, and in terms of deployment, how much underbidding, how low do PPAs go at that point? How underfunded is O&M, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. It's just going to get bigger. And the manufacturing cost. There's a whole uh, conference in Europe about this, the, 20, the one terawatt, 25 cent price for a module. All right. You know what the cost of manufacturing the cell, the entire module has to be? And that's all the way back through the chain to poly is has to be around like 10 cents for that to be a reasonable price. Now, the problem yeah. there is the cell manufacturer, unless they have captic wafer capacity and poly capacity, has really no control over those inputs. And nobody's equipment runs 100% at 100% all year long. So if you assume a perfect world when you set these future goals, an absolutely perfect world, then you're going to be, when something like a change of government in the U.S. and... Uh, where the EPA is being slowly phased out in some weird way where climate change isn't believed in. Yeah. That's a black swan incident. Nobody thought that would happen. That's a black swan. If you base an industry and your business on the most optimistic me metrics, a black swan is going to swoop on down and you know what they're going to do. Hmm. Well, on that note, we got to go. We're out of time, but um, tough times for solar right now. Stay tuned, everybody, and we'll keep talking about it next time on 3 at 3 on Solar PV. Yep, bye, and happy May Day again, bye. all you workers. Bye, bye. everyone.